Well, looky what we have here. 1990s Rockford Fosgate Punch 250M2 Power Series Amplifier in the box. Oh yeah, let's take a look inside. First off, you'll notice we get a manual that has the 250M2 and the 500M. These are sister amps from back in 1995. These were the top of the line for Rockford. Now you'd also typically get a punch verification certificate there was not one in the box, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later to give you some of the uh, expected results. So as we unfold this factory Rockford paper, here we are with the George Foreman grill. If you don't know what those are, you have to look it up. These are the mid-90s Rockford Fosgate DSM series amplifiers, and they introduced the Power Series here around 1995, and this is... The Power 250M2, which is a two-channel amplifier, and we'll talk about the settings and all that fun stuff here in a minute once we get the end panels off. Now, these end caps, speaking of end panels, are like gold. It is so hard to find these anymore because most people removed them from their amps years ago, and they either tossed them or lost them or fed them to their dog. I'm not sure what's up, but it is getting harder and harder to find amplifiers with the end caps. So if you're unfortunate enough to have one without end caps, you can start searching eBay and yeah, these things go for gold money. We're talking probably 75 bucks a piece for these end panels. So go back to 1995, the car audio and electronics directory. Let's take a look at the Rockford Fosgate section. We'll see the 250 M2 and the 500 M both $929 back then, which is equates to $1,900 plus today. Big money. So the 250M2 is a two-channel amplifier, 125 watts by two, four ohms, 225 by two at two ohms, 450 watts bridged at four ohms, less than 0.1% THD. Now the common mode rejection ratio is typically 40 dB. What is that? You have to look it up. The frequency response... 20 to 20 kilohertz. The bandwidth, though, is 10 hertz to 250 kilohertz. Now, why would you need 250 kilohertz? Well, if you're a greater wax moth, then you can uh, sense frequencies up to 300 kilohertz. It's a fun fact of the day, friends. This is not a Mickey Mouse program! Back in 1995, Rockford was using the Wolf for a lot of their advertisements, which was kind of odd to me because they didn't show a lot of their products. They just showed a Wolf. <laughs> However, I digress. Let's look at this brochure where it talks about the 250M2 as a true dual mono. We're going to definitely talk about that. The dual X cards, we're going to show that. And the easy bridge mode, yeah, that's really just a joke. All amps are easy to bridge. <laughs> balance line inputs, yeah, this was pretty cool. You did have to buy an external balance line transmitter, which I'm going to show here. Takes RCAs from your head unit, turns it into a DIN style connection balanced, which will go to the amplifier. Obviously recommended to put the BLT as close as possible to your head unit and then run the power cord to the amplifier. Let's look at the amplifier here on one end. We have a power LED, remote socket, then we have dual 8-gauge for B+, and ground. So kind of small wires, honestly, for these amplifiers back in the day. This is just kind of what we're used to. Also, the punch status display there uses the RJ45 connector. And you can see here it monitors the left and the right channel. Did have one of these to show off here, the BLT. It doesn't really show you like a VU meter of the amp. It just shows some other things. So I didn't actually hook it up during the test. If you want to see it in the future, please let me know. On the opposite end, we also have speaker outputs. These are eight gauge as well. We have a switch for zero to 180 degrees phase on that channel, as well as a gain control, balanced or unbalanced. We have inputs and outputs for RCAs. We have the balanced input over here on the right side, easy bridged, 180 or zero degrees, also a gain control, and the speaker output for the right channel. They kind of spread them out so it makes it look like it's a true dual mono. On the bottom of the amp, we have some explanations. You kind of need it for these X cards. And also talks about being made in the USA in the mid 90s, Rock for Fosgate were made in Tempe, Arizona. It gives the specs, gives you the serial number, all that good stuff. And also the two little uh, covers here, which let us get into the side of the amp to see these little X cards. So what these X cards do is set the crossovers, whether it's going to be high pass, low pass, full range for the amp itself, and then also for the pass through of RCAs. 
You big dummy. Oops, I dropped it. On the bottom of this crossover card, you can see the low pass, high pass, and how to set the amp up. On the other side is full range. And yeah, this is kind of how it used to work back in the day with these cards. As far as dimensions go, 13.6 on the long side, 9.6 on the width, 2.6 inches on the height, and the millimeter equivalents are there as well. Again, ratings, 125 by 2 at 4 ohms, 225 by 2 at 2 ohms. 4 ohms bridge, 450 watts. It is not 1 ohm stereo or 2 ohm mono, but if you stick around to the end, we will try lower than the factory ratings and see how it works. On the burst sheet that we saw online at 2 ohm stereo, the output power is supposed to range from around 275 to 415. The one that I found online was 355 per channel at 2 ohms, so we'll see how mine compares to that specific rating. Now we have the amp connected to the amp dyno. We did use the DD1 Plus to set 10 dB overlap. So let's try stereo test first at 40 hertz. Again, rated 125 watts by two. At lower THD than what we're gonna show here, we're going up to 1% total harmonic distortion. Let's see what we get. Oh yeah, 173, 163, right at 14.44. So good power there. Let's try the uncertified test up to the clipping point. Pretty close to the same. Keeps counting up. 185, 177. Again, those channels are really close. I mean, if you're just a couple watts off, it's really not much. Dynamic power. This amp doesn't exhibit as much dynamic power at four ohms as I thought it would. 179 and 172, but let's check out that efficiency. A class AB old school amp. It's not going to be very good efficient wise. 58% is about what we expect. Two ohm stereo is rated 225 watts by two. Low THD at 12.6 volts. So let's try it closer to 14.4. See what we get. There you go. 297, 294 right at 14.3. That is within the range that Rockford uh, had on that burst sheet. Remember it said like 279 to 355. So we're definitely in the range. Uncertified up to clipping, gets nicely above 300 watts, 315 and 304, right at about 14.2 volts. Let's try the dynamic burst power. And again, Rockford amps typically have a lot of dynamic power. This one does not exhibit a lot of dynamic power. 315 and 301, efficiency 55.7 or right around 56% at two ohm stereo. Now we're gonna bridge the amp mono to do the test at 40 hertz simulating a subwoofer rate of 450 watts, 12.6 volts, 0.1% THD. We're gonna go up to 1% using the certified test. Here we go. And there you go, 608 right at 14.4 volts. So their rating of 450 at low THD and low voltage is right on. This is not what I would call a truly underrated amp, but it does its power and does a little more. Uncertified up to clipping, gets well into the mid 600, 656 at 14.28. That's good power. Now let's try this dynamic burst at four ohms and see if we get a little bit more juice. And again, it is not the dynamic powerhouse that I'm typically used to seeing with the Rockford amp. 659 at 14.42, I was honestly a little bit disappointed. Efficiency-wise, 55%, which is right on par pretty much with the two ohm test. Here are the results, you can pause this if you wanna see, basically we just showed you all those tests, and I'm sure you guys are asking, what about the two ohms mono? What about the other tests? We'll stick around to the very end and I do some additional tests and show you why I didn't really show that here. Now let's open up the amp and take a look, find out what's inside, take a closer look at the components. Always makes me smile to see Nichicon capacitors and amplifiers. 4700 microfarad, 50 volts there on the rails. 2200 microfarad, 16 volts on the power supply side. And yeah, this amp looks typical mid-90s Rockford. And 
you'll notice it looks very symmetrical from one side if you cut it right through the middle. But I do want to talk about this true dual mono and a problem that I have with it. I'm not an amp designer by any means, but if you split a true mono down the middle, typically you'll see a mirrored image of components. Now there's one thing leaving this from being a true dual mono in my opinion, is it only has one transformer. So what's up with that? I ask online, I ask some questions, and here's a response you can read from Sean King, who is a well-known Rockford Fosgate repair tech. It's all about the rectifiers. Rectify. I do like the comment that Kuntal left here saying that there's no real benefit to dual mono anyway in real use. And yeah, we're just usually splitting hairs being audiophiles, but it's still fun to kind of push back when companies make claims of true dual mono when this is not a true dual mono amp in my opinion. So here's the rest of the internals you can see. See the Rockford Fosgate division pat number 4467288. It's also a John Welch design in the mid 90s. So let's take off these rails here that clamp down the MOSFETs and take a closer look at what we have underneath. Here are the crossover cards we talked about earlier, and it shows you where you get to the crossover cards from the bottom of the amplifier. These are a little tricky to get in and out, especially when you don't have the bottom plate of the amplifier off, but it is doable, but that's all there is to it. Set it in for full range this way or low pass or high pass on the other side, and it has arrows pointing to let you know which way you need to set it. Now we're gonna do a sound demo with the Elac, see how it sounds. Right for 250M2, let's try a little smoke jacket blues. Here's one we haven't played before Born a Rock Star by FX. I just want to stay bad, stay mad, shit by my shoulder because they treat me like an outcast. I ain't gonna take that, stay back. I'll be swinging on till the hits come in all caps. I ain't gonna lay back. This back rub song really pushes the bass. Get ready for it to feel the air come out of those ports. <laughs> There you have my review of the Punch 250M2. Make sure you check the link in the video description. I also have the sister amp, the Power 500M, which I tested a while back. You can see the results of that one, which are very similar to this one. So overall, this amp sounded really good with the bookshelf speakers. This was designed for mids and highs, and it did sound great. So it did not, however, get as much power as I would expect from Rockford Fosgate. They usually do a lot more than rated but it still did its rated power more. So thanks as always for watching. Until next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Thanks, that's pretty good. You know how them sound waves go? Mm -hmm. Cause I knew you guys would ask, we're gonna do some lower ohm tests of this 250M2. First off, we're gonna do certified at 1.6 ohms per channel you'll notice that it doesn't count up cleanly. It kind of slows down right around 160 watts or so. We've got 171 and 162. So then we'll try it uncertified up to clipping. 1.6 ohms per channel. And yet yeah, got over 300. It got 339, 334. So that's good power at 1.6. Let's try the dynamic burst. See if we can finally get some of the burst out of the amp. And no, it just... These amps are just not dynamic, or this particular one is not. And I think the 500M was the same way. You'll have to go back and watch that video to see. 
but I don't remember it having a whole lot of dynamic power. Speaking of dynamic power, we bridge the amp to two ohms mono and try it out just to see this is one ohm stereo per channel. Got close to a thousand watts, 900 and 53 or so at 13.98. So thanks as always for watching. Make sure you check my other videos. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Thank you for supporting Big D. I'm out.